Thank you very much, audience. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thanks. We are recording again. Thank you. 
the money race? Some know. Sometimes when these things are committed, we're committed and we'll have to go with it. On behalf of the family, I would like to welcome you to our service this afternoon. Paul declares in Romans that he is convinced that nothing, nothing can separate us from the love of God. Not our fears for today or our worries for tomorrow. No power either in the heavens or here on the earth. Indeed, nothing in all of creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God. Not even death can separate us from the love of God. God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. We are gathered here today to celebrate not because Rick has died, but we are here to celebrate Rick's very full and long-lasting life. We come witnessing to the gift that, that um, Rick belonged to God all of his days. He was encircled in the love of God while he was here. And even now, he remains encircled in that amazing love. Thanks be to God. I invite you to join me to, in the call to worship, which is printed in your bulletin. The Lord be with you. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort. Gracious and loving God, meet us in this time of worship as we come to celebrate and remember Rick. In our time together, we ask for your grace as we face the mystery of death so that we may see the light of eternity. For you are our creator. In you, we have eternal life. You are our sure and everlasting hope. To you, Holy Trinity, be all glory and honor. Amen. Together, hymn number one, Holy, 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 and you'll find the words up here.
be seated. I invite you to join me as we read together the 23rd Psalm. You will find this in your bulletin. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever.
at this time, I think that there are some family members who would like to come forward to share some reflections. If you'll just come to the microphone so we can hear you. Thank you. Just a sec, guys. My name is Mary Bayshore. Is that better? My name is Mary Bayshore. I'm, um, well, dad was, I was the oldest girl in the family. And uh, I have a little story to tell. And it's really strange. About the time I was seven, which is before actually David and Janet were born, um, dad had a, uh, a piece of newspaper in his wallet. And, um, it had a uh, quote by Emerson on it, and he used to let me read it, and he told me one time that the reason, excuse me, um, the reason that he uh, had it was because he had taken it out of his father's wallet before he had passed away. And he had it in his wallet, so I, I used to read it all the time, and he goes, well, you know what, I'm just going to give it to you. And he took this piece of newspaper out of his wallet and put it in one of those little folded over things that you put cards in, and I held it with me, and I kept it, and I had it for over 30 years, and then the paper disintegrated. But I fell in love with Emerson, and I found the quote, and I've carried it with me ever since. And the quote was, to laugh often and much, to win the respect of intelligent people and the affection of children, to earn the appreciation of honest critics and endure the betrayal of false friends, to appreciate beauty, to find the best in others, to leave the world a bit better, whether by a healthy child, a garden patch, or a redeemed social condition, to know even one life has breathed easier because you have lived. This is to be successful. And I think that encompasses my dad in a lot of ways. Um, and then in the 90s, I write poetry, and in the 90s I had written my dad a poem. And what I really loved was the fact it was still on a bookcase right up to the time he passed away. So that poem was called Daddy's Gift. My father gave a tree to me and said, my child, you're like that tree. And if your roots are sound, good, I'm sorry, if your roots are strong and sound, you'll have no troubles with problems found. And so I've weathered through the years. I've felt some pain and shed some tears. But then I look right at my tree and think, oh yes, it's just like me. For in the fall it starts to change, and winter comes to chill its pain. But with each spring, I, it's born anew, its strength enhanced with each morning's dew. So bear with me when I am sad, and enjoy with me the times I'm glad. And know that when I'm at wit's end, just like my tree, I'll bloom again. Um, the only other thing I'm gonna say is, I wrote myself an epitaph many, many years ago. And it really goes with my dad as well. And it's, peace lies in the valley. That's where he longed to be. No more pain shall he endure. Sweet death has set him free. Anyone else? Um, so, 
uh, I call him Bop, so I'm going to call him Bop in this. <laughs> um, I got to spend the last several days with Bop. Me and him were really close. Um, uh, we swung dance together for years. Um, we used to go on walks on the beach on family vacation. and um, <laughs> It's funny, I'm sadder for me than for him, you know. It's like, um, um, but yeah, I guess what I wanted to say and to comfort people with is um, that me and Aunt Anne, <laughs> um, when we were in the hospital together, one morning, the Bob was really, yeah, I mean, honestly, he was struggling, you know, he was struggling um, that he wasn't passing because he was ready to go. He kept saying, I'm ready, I'm ready, you know, and so that's peaceful for us. Um, and he would wake up day after day, like, why have I not gone, you know, kind of frustrated. And uh, he's like, what is happening? And, um, and so one day he wakes up and he's feeling bad about that. And, um, and I kind of say to him, you know what, Bob, like, I know that you were ready to go and that didn't happen. And I know that you hate that you're lying in a bed. I know that you want more than to lie in a bed. And so um, my mom told me that he liked Michael Buble. And I was like, do you want to hear Michael Buble? And he was like, yeah. And so we listened to that. And me and Bob start dancing because we used to dance together. And so many times over the past years, he would look at me and say, I can't dance with you anymore. And it would break my heart every time he said it. And so we started dancing together. And as we're dancing, Aunt Anne comes in and then, you know, all this. And uh, anyway, so Bob starts seeing visions of heaven he's greeting people saying hi you know doing all these things and um yeah I mean there's a there's a painting of it out there um but he was seeing these visions of heaven saying hi hi he looked at me and he said there are a lot of people here you know um and then the next day he woke up still in heaven and um and whenever he was in heaven his voice was strong and he would go, good morning. Like, you know, his voice sounded strong. And when it wasn't, he would say he was very weak in his voice. And uh, so the last thing I'll just leave you with, because I brought peace to me. I thought maybe it could bring peace to all of you. Um, Bob was in heaven from 7 to noon, you know, a long time the next morning. And uh, just kind of walking around, walking around. And there's this part where he just shouted, I'm crossing through the gate. <laughs> and and then I see one little tear come out of his eye. And he starts doing this, like he's wiping his cheeks. And I said, are those happy tears, Bob? And he said, oh, yeah. And I said, what do you see? And he said, my wife. And so for anybody that needs that peace, I know that that has brought me a lot of peace. Um, eventually, I'll record all the things so that the siblings can have that information too. But anyway, um, I love Bob very much. I know what he meant to me as a as a grandfather. Um, honestly, the hardest things is just thinking I won't hear him laugh or thinking he won't we wink at me. You know, he used to wink at me all the time. And um, and I will say something is that Bob had his mind until the very very end. I was in the ambulance ride with him on the way when we got him back to his house. And he was winking at me, even in the ambulance ride. <laughs> and so the very last thing he said to me, actually, was in the ambulance ride. And I said, we're going home, Bob. We're going home. And it was his last wish. And he winked at me. And he said, thank you. And so, you know, we made it happen. And Uncle David and Aunt Anne, you know, put in the years and the time to make that all happen. Thank you so much. I'm going to stop going on and on. But um, thank you guys all for coming. Um, my Bob was a really special man, and I know you all know that, so thank you for coming. Yes. Oh, yes, absolutely. just thought if it's a little open forum, uh, I will share a little something. Um, I would just like to share like a couple of like fond memories that I have of my grandfather. Um, he was just like a really confident man. Like, when, when he, I remember him like in his 70s and he'd be like, check out my muscles, you know, and I'm like, you're 70. <laughs> um, and that was just who he was. And he, he was like that. I mean, I can't imagine what it was like in his 20s, but uh, obviously I didn't know him then. Um, but 
that's just something I think about him. I, I always think about him like giving little like secret winks or like annoying my grandmother. Uh, and she'd be like, Rick, that will do, you know, but in like a loving, playful way, <laughs> like in a loving, playful way. Um, and I think of like, you know, breakfast at their dining room table, like it was always oatmeal, oatmeal and like pecans and raisins and banana slices. Um, and yeah, I think that those are things that I, I'll always have fond memories of. And, um, and I'm grateful when I was um, in my 20s, I moved to Richmond and I got to know my grandparents more outside of just like the grandparent realm and more as like adults, or I guess I was an adult. <laughs> um, and so I got to really appreciate them. And, and I learned a lot from him, like about, I just, I really appreciate how much he loved family. That man was bold. Like he'd be like, you're my relative. I will travel a hundred plus thousand, mi whatever, miles. And we're related. So I'm going to knock on your door and we're going to spend time together. Um, and I just love that about him. And I feel like um, like we're so blessed and I, I think it was it's been my uncle John who's been uploading all these like family video the man always had a video camera like stuck to his eyeball like for my whole entire childhood uh, and I'm sure I don't know what he was using before the camcorder you know existed but maybe it was, I'm just like lots of photographs you know but um, I think because of that we have all these beautiful memories um, that we can like look back on and reflect and even like um, like times together that's like oh I totally forgot that that happened um, and and I think like and when I think about him like and reflecting on him like he he and my Nana they would visit they they would I mean their grandchildren were spread all across there there are many of us you know my my mom's one of eight and um, and they would go and visit them like they were just people who loved their family my Nana and my Papa um, and so he was just a man who like like spent a lot of time with his grandchildren and I, um, I just think that that's um, a really beautiful thing and um, yeah those are just a few things that I really loved about him and thank you all for being here. I'm not a public speaker, I'm a gardener. <laughs> I'm the other guy, Ulrich, <laughs> the other Ulrich. My dad was a, um, a, a, great, a great example of how to live your life. Just live your life the way you want to live it. <laughs> and he um, had a great imagination and uh, he just did amazing things. And in many ways, I don't think he did everything he wanted to do, but he got pretty close. And, you know, at 99, that's pretty much a long time to do all those things you love to do. And re referring to um, Mary and um, Sammy and what Betsy said, all of those things are so true and they just resonate in my heart. And I wasn't going to come up, but I felt like we should all invite ourselves up here to just um, experience how much love there was for my dad, even when we didn't understand exactly what are you doing. <laughs> you got you got a camera on your shoulder, and you're in my face, <laughs> you know. And he loved to do that, and so he was bold and beautiful, but he was. He was a real man, that's for sure. And so I'm very proud of his life and I'm proud of our family. I, I have not cried yet. <laughs> but I'm reading something here. It says, I am shape, I'm a potter shaping evil against you, devising a plan against you. Turn now, all of you, from your evil way and amend your ways and your doings. I shouldn't read that, but I'm just, I'm just, it's just there. So if this is silly, I'm just saying, um, we are good people and we should commend ourselves for our good lives and our good works and altogether we make a difference and my dad made a difference. 
God bless. I knew you guys were going to keep me on my toes today. <laughs> Anybody else? Uh, then let us hear the words of God for the people of God. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. I have said these things to you while I am still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. This is the word of, the God, word of God. Thanks be to God. I shared with the family earlier that coming to join in the ministry of Trinity during the height of a pandemic to be a pastoral care associate leaves one a little hard, leaves it a little hard. I just couldn't go out and go visiting with folks. So I learned to know those who I saw on Zoom or learned to know voices on the other end of a phone and only occasionally was I able to meet with someone face to face, or should I say mask to mask. I was glad when in a break in the pandemic and the upticks, the Reaching Out House Church was able to meet in person and we all showed up at Rick's house so he could join us. Then as the numbers increased, I missed getting to know him better as we were once again forced to curtail visits. One day I had decided that I had just missed seeing him too long and I needed to go and visit and get to know him better and I was able to do that. So I called Anne on the phone to set up a visit when I couldn't reach Rick and found that he was in the hospital. In the days that followed, I caught I quickly caught a glimpse of the joy that it was to know Rick. He was so welcoming, and he made those around him, me included, feel cared for and loved. I'll never forget him telling me with a little twinkle in his eye and a smile on his face that he would soon turn 400, <laughs> or that he liked my beard every time I showed up in a mask. He told me how wonderful one of those machines hooked to him in the hospital was that helped him. And he even asked Betsy to take our picture. I've got to tell you, right up to the end, he wanted a camera, right? <laughs> David, your whole family worked to make sure that he was able to go home from the hospital where he really wanted to be. The last thing that Rick told me on the last day that I visited as I walked out of the room was, keep smiling. My image of Rick from those visits and the snippets of conversation I will remember while he was in the hospital will remain with me for my lifetime and will serve as a source of joy. I am grateful for the opportunity, no matter how short it was, that I, had to, that I had to be able to get to know a little bit about this man who lived for almost a century. As I stood there with him and praying with him, I would think of all the changes that he witnessed in his lifetime. I know that Rick knew good times and I know that he knew hard times and hard times of losing people that he loved 
his wife, his parents, friends. He told me once that when you get to be his age, a lot of your friends have died before you. Today, we will witness a service of military honors because Rick served his country well. He and Betty are together in the Veterans Cemetery in Amelia. He loved his country. Rick also loved his family, and he loved you well. He made friends and participated in the work of church here and elsewhere. I have kind of wondered what it would be like to moderate the session that he was serving on, but then I decided it's probably not worth thinking about, because <laughs> I'm sure it would be fun. And from my very first meetings that I had in training for my role in pastoral care here at Trinity, I was told of the three amigos. As I talked with Bill Sanders and Bill Wilson to let them know that Rick was in the hospital, I could tell that those friendships that he made here at Trinity were strong and meant a lot to all those that he came in contact with. Bill Sanders told me that long before they met, Rick and Bill were connected without even knowing it. They shared experiences and memories together, like Rick flying over fields during his time in service. This took place at the exact time and over the exact fields where Bill Sanders was spending his days working and watching planes. Friends, it is an honor and a joy to be included in this celebration of life for Rick. It has been an honor to be invited into the lives of his family. David, Anne, Betsy, Janet, all of your family. I can tell that Rick loved you very deeply. I can tell by the ways you talk of him. I can tell by the ways I've watched you care for him. From covering him with a beautiful handmade quilt in the hospital to the way you made his wishes your priority even in the last hours of his life. And the ways that you have paid tributes to him since then, painting pictures and putting together videos and much, much more, telling me stories that I laugh at and remember. As we gather to remember and celebrate Rick's well-lived life, we also come to bear witness to the faithfulness of God. Scripture tells us that God orders our life in seasons and that there are gifts in each and every one of them. Throughout all the seasons of life, the Good Shepherd leads and guides us and provides uh, for us with a love that is far greater than any one of us can begin to imagine. Through that love, we have the hope that Jesus promised. As Jesus left his friends in his earthly realm, he assured them that they would not be alone and that he would go ahead to make a place for them in eternity. All throughout his life, Rick was wrapped in and surrounded by that love of God. God ordered his days and the seasons of his life through that love. And in the hours after returning home from the hospital, Rick exchanged his home in this world for the heaven that he had seen. And he got to really walk through the gates, right, Betsy? The truth that we lean on today is what I started our service with. Through our faith in Jesus Christ, nothing, nothing can separate us from that love of God. Rick lived through good times and hard times, and through it all, God embraced him and held him close. I have no doubt that Rick touched many lives, making a difference of some kind to every single one of them. He will be missed. He will be missed by his family here. He will be missed by his friends here, he will be missed by us all. As we gather to celebrate Rick's life, we come today to give thanks to God for God's special blessing 
the blessing of Ulrich Hubert Renard. Let us join together in singing Amazing Grace. be seated. Let us pray. Oh God, your love for us is beyond what we can ever imagine. We thank you this day for the gift you gave in Ulrich Renard, whose baptism is now complete. We praise you that you have turned the shadow of death into the brightness of morning light for him. That for him suffering and death are past, and he knows the joy of being in your presence. We praise you for the life that Rick lived, for the ways he reached out to touch and make a difference in all of those who knew him. In Jesus Christ, you promised many rooms within your house, and as we gather today to remember Rick, we celebrate his life, and we gather also, though, to say goodbye. 
Give us faith to see beyond touch and sight some sure sign of your kingdom. Wrap your arms of comfort around each and every one gathered here, O oh Lord. Offer Rick's family very sweet memories of him to carry them in the days and the years ahead. Let them constantly be aware of the ways that you have loved them through Rick and that you love and walk with them now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. On behalf of a grateful nation, the American Legion proudly presents to you this flag under which Rick served. God bless you. God bless your family. God bless the memories of Rick Brown. Friends, may the peace of Christ, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds, and the love of God, Christ, and the Holy Spirit remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen.